Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing this flower. I did the centre in another video using the Derwent Light Fast. I'm actually going to be doing the flower using um, polychromos, um, Faber Castell polychromos. Now what I'm going to do, this is from um, Johanna Basford's um, Daily Planner can see so um, it's sort of cut off it's just part of a picture but I want to demonstrate how you can do petals that look like they're curled um, curled over at the ends and um, although this is cut off it won't matter we can just do it on this little bit so I'm going to use oranges for this and I'm going to start with my darkest orange which is a actually the light cadmine red and I'm going to start at the bottom of the petals and just do a, a little bit and what I'm doing is I'm starting with a dark um, a darker pressure, harder pressure sorry at the end of the petal and then gently pulling the pressure off the pencil so I go towards the middle you can probably see the sort of action that I'm taking like a little flick to, uh, to do that and I'm going to do that on the end of every petal because I want every one to look like they're curled over just so you can see the effect. Now towards the middle as well I'm going to uh, put some dark colouring as well. Let me make sure that stays in shot for you, there we go. Um, but I'm not going to go in with quite this dark, this red. I'll probably wait till I do my next colour but uh, in the middle I might do some shadowing with a with a, um, a sort of browny colour, grey, my dark sepia but I'll have a think about it as we go now here we've got a bit of shadow come in from this leaf so we can uh, do that as well now I'm not pressing awfully hard at the moment we can uh, add more layers later so next I'm going to go use the dark cadmium orange which is the darkest orange that you get in the polychromos and I'm going to go over the top of what I did already but pull, pull it out further towards the centre and basically you do this with a selection of colours now you can use any um, pencil set but uh, you can you just need to go from your sort of darkest orange or lightest red through to your uh, a lighter color and you can do it with any range of colors it's quite straightforward once you know how to do it now i also, i start with the darkest some people start with the light and go to the dark but it, i think it's all down to personal taste really I'll just do a little bit on that one um, I'm trying to think whether to do the centre with this but I won't that's that one my next one I picked out is the it's orange glaze and I'm going to go in the middle with this from the centre I will be putting another layer between these little circular pieces and the orange so and I will need to colour the um, these bits in at some point. Uh, to me, these look like little seeds, so probably I will probably just do them black. Now, be careful. What I sometimes do is I'm going round, jolly, not thinking, and go in these gaps. So uh, try to make sure you don't do that. Or um, if you're going to have a put a background on after, it might not matter. It depends what your background's going to be. So. Uh, and here it's a bit more complicated to work out that's a gap because uh, we can't see all that. And here I can't see what I'm doing, so I'm just going to go around and just uh, assume it's this colour. Now with this one, I'm not going to go all the way back to the edge where this dark. I'm just going to go about halfway back through what we've already coloured in. Now again you can see this beginning to look a little bit stripy it's okay we can always go over with more layers with polychromos it's much better to keep going over with lots of layers than to uh, burnish it down hard to start with if you make it too hard to start with you can't then 
change the sort of shade that you've chosen. Okay, and then next I'm going to use this one here, which is number 111, but I can't see it's something orange. I can't see. I shall, I shall put all the, uh, all the uh, numbers into the description. And what I'm going to do is bring a little bit down from the top and take a little bit up from the bottom. And go all the way around doing this. Now some people leave a white gap in their petals to look like oops, look like the um the sun is sort of catching it. Now, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably gonna make it slightly yellowed, but we'll see how it looks. It's sometimes you just need to have a look see how it looks when you get to that point which I'm at now and I'm going to go use this which is something chrome yellow or chrome yellow 109 sorry it's a bit high up for you there and I'm going to go over everything I've done already to sort of blend it together with this colour and just slightly leave just a very slight white gap I don't know if you can see that if you watch so I'm just going to leave a few flecks of white because I do want this piece bit here to look like it's reflecting the light because I want it to look like it's the highest point of the petal but I don't want to leave big gaps of white just a little bit now you can always add white in at the end if you've covered over too much or decide you want a little bit more using a white gel pen but if you're using a book which isn't on white paper, then it might look a little old. Or you can use a white pencil. Now, some white pencils are better than others. Um, but you'll find that um, if you've got a Prismacolor white or a um, Caran d'Ache Luminance or a Derwent Lightfast white, they're very good. But uh, Polychromos whites, they're okay don't always work quite so well. Okay now we're going to work in the middle with the dark sepia to put some shadow in and I'm going to do quite a gentle pressure. I don't want lots but just to emphasize the fact that this is lower down and just gently scumble it. Can you see how I'm doing little circular motions called scumbling? Just scumble it out from the center to sort of blend it. So rather than doing the up and down motion that I was doing before, I'm using a different technique just because I want to make sure I don't press too hard. If I use the tip of the pencil and push in it will uh, it will produce a lot more colour. So just gently and you can see that that's now looking more like it's the um, centre is lower down than the petals coming up out of it and I find it doesn't always look right straight away but once you've done all of them the um, impact is greater. Now I'm going to add some orange on top of that. I'm going to use the orange glaze and just not go right down to the centre but just sort of blend it in a little bit and it won't take too long and then on the outside edge of the petals I'm going to go back to my light cadmium red that we used right at the beginning because we went over it in orange and yellow it doesn't stand out so much so I want to get a really dark edge but I'm going to make sure I blend it up into the next dot of colour. Now here we have this area where we might have had shadow. I've ignored that at the moment. With those sorts of areas, I don't always do much with them until I finish the whole picture. Because if I do shadow there, I'd have to do it with every other time that that happens in the picture. 
and I have to decide if that's an effect that I want to have or not. Now I'm pressing hard around the outside edge like I was before but this time you see I'm using this gumbling motion which I was using for the centre which just helps to blend it in a little bit better. Now if you look at that, it looks a bit like these are turned down just slightly and then this is this is further in so it looks like the leaves are slightly curled and that's the effect that I was going for. Now I am going to put this little bit of shadow in just to show you how I would do it. So I go in with this dark sepia that uh, we used in, in the centre. Now I don't really want too much, just a touch. And hopefully that will look a bit more like the leaf is above the plant. It really doesn't always look quite right until you finish the whole picture. So there we go. I'm quite happy with that. And that shows you how to do that sort of uh, curled leaf effect. So uh, thank you for watching.